All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined all the way from Bulgaria. In fact, our first Bulgarian guest ever, Irina Podubnaya. How are you doing, Irina? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here, John. And uh, I'm delighted to hear that I'm the only Bulgarian <laughs> that has been to your podcast so far. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We people from all over the world, but never from Bulgaria before. And, uh, and Irina is the founder of TrackMage. And what we're going to talk about today is how to create the best possible post-purchase experience and, and get extra sales from existing customers but on autopilot. So very interesting subject. So, um, uh, Irina, first thing, the first thing that uh, jumps out at me is this concept of experience, right? It's not, it's not the, uh, the post-purchase kind of process or whatever, but it's experience. And that's really what people uh, base a lot of their, their repeat business or their loyalty to brands is on the whole experience they have interacting with the brand, not just the purchasing experience, but as you say, the post purchase. So how can how can people focus on that piece and create the kind of experience that the customers are looking for? So the first uh, and foremost, what uh, you need to pay attention to is uh, definitely just have some kind of post purchase experience. Uh, because uh, we focus mainly on uh, helping e-commerce businesses create those post-purchase experiences, uh, but that's fair for all the businesses. After the customer uh, has made their purchase, there needs to be a follow-up, uh, because uh, in certain uh, cases, uh, people just uh, they expect uh, to get uh, information about their order or uh, some onboarding link uh, that you can send. So it definitely uh, helps uh, to create not only brand loyalty, but opportunities for further business with that customer. Uh, because uh, every time the customer has uh, this need to get information, uh, like they have to put some effort into reaching to customer support and that already creates some anxiety on the customer mm -hmm. side because like, oh, we're not taking care of me. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, if you can just uh, provide this uh, information proactively or actually provide a good post-purchase uh, experience uh, altogether with uh, uh, multiple touch points, you're going to actually uh, make it better for the customer. They don't have to reach out to customer support. They already have, have all the information. Yeah, it's um, it's a really good point because I think what what as you said, what often happens is when somebody makes a purchase, regardless of whether it's a consumer purchase or it's a a business to business purchase, there's that period of time when they sort of feel a little bit alone, like oh, I bought this now, I'm 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 here on my own, and I think that's the point where. As you say, especially in B2B, if you have multiple touch points, if you give them the information, if you just make people feel like they're not alone once they've made the purchase. Yes, uh, that's definitely helpful to uh, maintain the contact and constant communication with your customer. Uh, and uh, it's uh, also to alleviate this uh, phenomenon called uh, buyer's remorse. Uh, mm -hmm. Once the customer actually bought the product and they immediately regret buying it because they bought it on a whim or maybe because the uh, sales uh, offer was very good or maybe there was a promotion. And then uh, like if you don't follow up immediately and just provide them some credibility, for example, from existing customers, uh, like it's really a good idea to at least send them uh, some email that mentions uh, the previous customer's experiences and reviews. Uh, because uh, that creates this instant uh, remedy uh, for the like for this uh, like buyer's remorse. Because sometimes uh, we don't make all the decisions rationally. Uh, sometimes we make decisions emotionally, mm -hmm. and that tends to happen in e-commerce more than it tends to happen in B two B sales or uh, I don't know um, some uh, digital product sales. Because like well, in digital product sales, that also happens uh, just because. Uh, <laughs> Uh, people can buy uh, a course yeah. on a whim because they want the actual result that the course offers. 
So the idea is here to uh, literally provide uh, information proactively so that the customers, they don't feel the buyer's remorse uh, or uh, the need to reach out to customer support and like poke your company to like provide information uh, that uh, they actually expect. Yeah, and I think and I think that's um, part of it now is I think even that idea of, I mean, customer support. Yes, you know, you need customer support, but it's more about, uh, you know, customer engagement and and con and continuing to engage with your customers in different ways as they as the journey goes along. But one of the things we face today is obviously a lot of people look at products and services as commodities, and there's no difference between any of them, and they switch them. You know, they can switch them on a whim. Um, but the thing that normally ties somebody, I mean, as long as the product or service is a good one, what ties it to them is then the connection they develop with the with the brand or the organization. And that's and that is human based normally. Yeah, uh, I could actually share some uh, statistics. Yes, please. Uh, it's it's very interesting. <clears throat> so after making the first purchase, uh, the customer is 27% uh, more likely to uh, buy from the uh, store again or from the brand again, mm -hmm. uh, to, to keep it more general. Uh, so then uh, if we buy two times, it's 47% uh, more likely to happen uh, the third time. And if I buy for third time, it's 57%. So literally, that's uh, the indication that the customer is going to continue buying from the brand, like regardless of what happens, unless uh, like unless the brand actually just defies all the expectations and uh, doesn't deliver on the promise or there is like a real big problem. Uh, so literally, uh, many businesses, they don't count on long term uh, when they are planning uh, to grow their sales. Uh, they only count on this uh, like first initial sale uh, and mm -hmm. they power all the money to acquire the new customers. But it's actually uh, five times uh, more expensive to get a new customer than to retain an existing one. So maybe you uh, like <laughs> as a business owners, uh, as business owners, we uh, are leaving money on the table when we don't pay attention to our existing customers uh, and always trying to acquire new ones, new ones, new ones. So, yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, yeah, to your point is like, you know, uh, we kind of like get sometimes we, we, we gain new customers and then we kind of take them a little bit, little bit for granted as opposed to saying, okay, we want them to have the best experience possible. And the statistics that you've just outlined there really, really bear this out. So you can imagine if you may, if you make a, if you really work on a fantastic post-purchase experience, then you can even drive those numbers up. And, and the, obviously the, the return is there, but, but why is it that a lot of companies don't focus on the post on the post-purchase experience? That's a very interesting question. Uh, overall, uh, I believe that comes from this, uh, like this uh, belief uh, that is commonly held by the companies is that uh, customer support or the post purchase is the cost for the company. Mm. But actually, mm. it's not a cost. Uh, it's the revenue center that you just don't uh, activate because uh, the post purchase experience and customer support essentially is part of marketing. Because mm -hmm. uh, when you are uh, reaching out to the customers after they made the purchase, and uh, they like uh, they get uh, additional information from your brand. That's the biggest uh, and the best opportunity to provide them with an additional uh, offer, so that they can buy from you again. So it's not uh, like you know uh, which businesses uh, make it uh, like the, the best post purchase experience. I would say uh, those businesses that sell supplements or vitamins, uh, they mm -hmm. usually follow up all the time. Like, oh, do you need a refill? Uh, do you need to continue your treatment or something like that? And that comes naturally for those businesses just because they uh, build retention inside of the business model. So uh, as long as the person is uh, after the result that the supplement provides, they are going to continue buy the supp supplement. And if they actually get results, <laughs> they will buy. Mm -hmm. like, they will continue buying forever. Yeah. And one of, one of the other things I think that people sometimes overlook is that when you do, and I, and I think your point is a very good one that some companies just see after, after sales as a cost center and, you know, everything is, all the money is kind of pushed to the, to the front end of the process. But the point, but your, your point is, is, is a real excellent one, is a really excellent one is when you, when you really do 
treat people and the experience doesn't stop, right? I mean, there's not a big gap between the experiences. It's a seamless experience as you transition from one thing to another and you get you get the assets or the information or the context to people you need at the different points. So it has to be a well thought out, well laid out process, correct? Yes, uh, and the more touch points you provide for your customer to get back to you, uh, the better. Uh, so, uh, for example, with TrackMage, uh, we help e-commerce businesses uh, with uh, email notifications that come to the customers. Uh, mm -hmm. So they don't have to reach out to customer support. They just get emails uh, passively, uh, I would say. Uh, also, uh, we provide this uh, touch point that uh, commonly uh, gets uh, like missed uh, by the brands uh, in the e-commerce industry. Uh, so what we provide is uh, a tracking page uh, where people can uh, see their shipments. And uh, usually the customers, they don't treat that uh, information as marketing. They treat mm -hmm. it as a transactional uh, or transaction related yeah. information. But when they take a look, uh, that's the opportunity when they get uh, like really prone to taking your upsell because they see your product. Uh, and that's what uh, some uh, companies like Amazon or eBay or even AliExpress, they capitalize on. Because every time you can get uh, the customer back to your store, uh, or back to your uh, website uh, in general, the, like every time you have the opportunity to sell them something. And if you just uh, don't give this traffic to some carrier companies like DHL, FedEx or whatever uh, you're using, uh, like <laughs> uh, you, will be, uh, you will be getting at least uh, five to 10% extra sales uh, without having to provide anything extra. And just right. provide them the information about the package. That's what uh, TrackMage discovered, and uh, that's what we're uh, trying to get to as many e-commerce businesses out there uh, as we can. Yeah, I know it's a it's a really good point because when we do buy something, you know, there's the initial excitement of buying it, and then there's the getting it actually into your hands, right? And therefore, nowadays with the amount of shipping and stuff that's done, the tracking it's very important, and it's a great opportunity, as you say, to continually like touch with the person you know have a touch point with the person because uh you know they're getting excited you want them to stay excited about it rather than like have forgotten about it by the time it arrives but that's that's a great point another one i wanted to come back on is is the the people overlook sometimes is that if you have a great post purchase experience great customer uh, support interaction and all of that it's often after those interactions that customers will actually provide you with testimonials and referrals um because now they're like wow you really came through for me you know you've supported me my role has been great you solved my problems and that's i often find that's where you get the best uh, referrals and testimonials I definitely agree about that point. Uh, and uh, another uh, opportunity to get as testimonials is when they actually get uh, the product in their hands. Mm -hmm. uh, what we noticed uh, is that, uh, for example, uh, with uh, many autoresponders, you can schedule those emails out, uh, for example, to arrive in two weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. But what if a customer de doesn't receive your product in two weeks? Uh, what yeah. if like there was a customs hold or something else uh, got in the way and they receive that email prematurely uh, and they say like, okay, but yeah, I, I haven't got the product yet. Uh, what review are you expecting? Mm -hmm. and so that's why uh, in TrackMage, for example, we have uh, the emails that are sent only when the status of the package actually changes to deliver. So right. we are adamantly sure uh, that they got the package and that means that uh, they can provide the best uh, review. And customers tend to even forget about their first experience with the product when they were really excited. Uh, if you ask them maybe like a week later, they will say like, eh, why, why would we yeah. even review it? <laughs> but when they actually just unpacked it and uh, bragged uh, like the, the family members or their friends, uh, that's the best uh, time to ask them for a review if you are in e-commerce. Yes, no, absolutely. But even not in e-commerce, as, as like I said, if when when you have a good post uh, purchase experience, when when you can get good interaction with the customers, that's when there's a great opportunity for them to give you referrals or give you um, testimonials um, as well. Um, what are some other things that what that companies can do in the post uh, sales process to really kind of solidify their relationship with the customer? 
Um, well, another thing what, uh, what you could do is you can enrich the customer profile. Uh, so you can get uh, more information about them, uh, understand uh, which products they prefer to buy, uh, what, uh, what, like, when is their birthday, <laughs> or like whatever, uh, whatever interesting uh, facts you can find out about them. Because the more segmented, uh, the more tailored uh, you can uh, make that uh, customer experience, the more human is going to feel to your customers. Because uh, when you are even communicating to the customers in their native language, that makes a huge difference. Uh, that's why we uh, paid a lot of attention to localizing like, the tracking information mm -hmm. and emails. Uh, so that uh, like whenever the customer is from a specific country, uh, they receive uh, emails uh, in their uh, native language. For example, for Bulgaria, right. it will be Bulgarian. For USA, it's going to be uh, English. Yeah. So, or a version yeah. a version of English. <laughs> well, I, I would say it's English. Yes, English. I'm just joking. I know. I just love because I'm originally from Ireland. I was given my wife's American and my son, obviously, and I because love giving them a hard time over the pronunciations and different things around English. But it's a but it's a that's a that's a really great point, is because I do think that uh, often people don't spend enough time making the communications, as you said, pers kind of personal to them, like in their in their language, maybe. You, you, um, and and that human element, because you want to feel like there are people behind these emails, right? You want to feel like there's people behind the product. I think that's the other thing sometimes is, is that when we feel like there's just technology between us and humans, um, we start to feel a little, um, if you like, isolated. So having that connection and really understanding and feeling that there's people behind the product is is huge, I think. Yeah, uh, it definitely helps. Uh, well, you know, like I've been uh, shopping around and uh, I've been seeing various uh, variations of uh, post-purchase experience. And uh, the most uh, thrilling is the one where you don't get any information. Or if you get the information, but it's wrong or for a wrong country. Mm. I had that uh, interesting uh, situation where uh, the product was actually uh, like on the website. I, I saw that uh, they shipped it to Belgium, not to Bulgaria. Oh, and uh, I thought like, what? what? Uh, I need to contact them. I sent them an email. I got a bounce back. I right. tried to call them. Uh, like uh, the machine answered uh, me in German. Uh, but this uh, phone number mm -hmm. is like something like a hotline. But I couldn't get to a real human. Uh, like I, I had no yeah. like, like I had no other way uh, but to come to PayPal and issue a refund, and then you mm -hmm. know what? Like I got the refund from PayPal, no problem. Uh, yeah. Then in two weeks, I actually received my package, <laughs> so they lost <laughs> money on this transaction. But just if they simply replied to my email or they, if they simply replied to their phone uh, call, uh, they would have saved that sale. So it's not only about uh, just providing some uh, better customer experience so that you don't uh, so that you have an opportunity to sell them something uh, else. Mm -hmm. It's also to protect your uh, current business uh, from getting refunds or some uh, negative um, reviews or something else. Yeah, you know, that's a that, that's a really good point. And, and it's amazing how many people still or how many companies or people who provide products, how they still think that, you know, customer service is an afterthought. You don't have to worry about it. I can just set it up technology. I don't need somebody who can answer the phone or anything like that. And it's so the opposite because right now, as I said, I can choose probably 20 of, if I decide I want to buy something, I can probably choose 20 of the top products. Probably 10 of them are pretty equal and I can buy one. And if the experience isn't that great afterwards, I'll swap it out for another one. Um, so it, people are really, it's its a really short-sighted not to build that after sales. And particularly, as you said, I mean, we when they ship your when they ship your product to a completely different country, you think they would be the ones to reach out to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what? Uh, after the fact, I actually received a survey from them uh, like, how would you rate your customer support or something? Uh, and uh, when I clicked on the link, uh, it went to a dead uh, web page. Like, it's like five, 500. Like, I, it couldn't be found. Uh, and then, uh, in the end, I actually found the forum where I could submit feedback. And the actual question that I uh, got on the forum was like, what could we improve? I answered uh, so that there is no miscommunication. I translated it into, into German and said mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, Alice, like everything. <laughs> what could you improve? Like everything. 
<laughs> I love it. Listen, this has been great. Uh, Irina, all of Irina's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and TrackMage. Yes. Uh, so trackmage.com uh, is a post-purchase uh, tool uh, that you can integrate with your uh, e-commerce store uh, and uh, it will help you uh, get uh, your customers the information about their packages uh, and uh, also provide them with uh, the opportunity to buy from uh, you again. Uh, you can uh, provide... Uh, uh, like the customer support widget there uh, and uh, the page actually is translated in multiple languages so you can provide the customer support or the post-purchase information in the language that your customer actually understands and of course we have the email notifications uh, that uh, come uh, based on the status of the package uh, so Perfect. yeah uh, and your uh, you're welcome on our website uh, and also on all the social media channels where we are present yeah, listen, fantastic. And I guarantee you, if you work with uh, with uh, Irina and TrackMage, uh, you're going to have a great after purchase experience, right? <laughs> the best. Yes. Oh, well, definitely. <laughs> uh, we, we do answer all the customer support uh, questions, unlike some people. <laughs> so, like, we do. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Irina. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.